Well, I think what I want to share is um, three messages that I heard from pastors at different parts of my life that probably didn't mean a lot when I heard them, but they do now. The first one was from my childhood pastor, Reverend West. He does have a connection to you guys because he is the brother-in-law. Oh, let me get this right. He's the brother-in-law, Nancy Wilson's aunt. Oh, wow. So that's the connection. And, and he was my childhood minister. And he preached a sermon one time on not wishing your life away. And at the time, I didn't, I was a young kid, I didn't understand what that meant, but I think it means a lot to me now. And I think a lot of times that we set goals and we look forward to things, and there's nothing wrong with looking forward to things, but a lot of times we're thinking, gosh, it's the middle, it's the beginning of the day, I wish it was five o'clock so I could leave work. You know, I can't wait for two more weeks, you know, I can't wait for Christmas or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those things, but what I'm learning now with what I'm going through, is living in the now and appreciating every single moment. Yeah, there are milestones. I have to say this week, I was looking forward to going to the concert with Reggie, but at the same time, it's like learning to really appreciate the things that's going on every second of your life. The next one was a guest preacher at our um, church one time, and he talked about the dash. And that really stuck with me. And what that means is if you look on a tombstone, generally, you know, you've got, you know, someone's birth date and then the end date. And there's just a dash right there. But when you really think about it, your whole life is that dash. That's not what's displayed. And he was asking, how are you going to live your dash? And that really stuck with me. And I'm thinking, you know what, you're right. What really counts is how we're living our life. Are we making an impact? Are we doing the right things? You know, um, are we giving of ourselves? Are we being loving people? And it really made me take an inner look and focus on, you know, what, what I was doing. And then the last one was a minister that preached on the fact that God provides. And, you know, I always knew that God provides, but it wasn't until recently with this illness that I'm going through that it really showed me how God is providing. And just quickly, I'll tell you, one of the things that I noticed that about 32 years ago, in July of 1985, I walked into the doors of Ross Abbott Laboratories. And at that time, I made a few decisions as far as maybe insurance, 401k, things such as that. But at the time, I was 26. I wasn't really thinking, what does this mean? But I remember at the time when I was filling out papers, for some reason, I kept checking these boxes, and I'm thinking, I don't know why I'm doing this, but, you know, I felt, felt led to do so. Well, here it is 35 years later. Because of those boxes I checked, I now have insurance when I don't have a job. I now have a 401k. And I guess my point is God was providing back then when I was 28 years old, knowing, you know, what was going to be happening in my life. Uh, there are so many things that, that I can talk about, but one of the things I also have to say, when God provides, He answers prayers. And I remember when I first had this illness, one of the things I prayed about was, help me to be a good person, but I need some guidance. You know, I would love to have someone, you know, that can guide me in my walk with you and knowing what to do. Well, the very next day, my daughter tells me, she goes, Mom, you know, I've got this, this person named Reggie Cook that's going to stop by the house, and he's going to help me with some things that he helped me with before. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember Reggie. And I had just prayed that, that prayer the night before, and then Reggie came in. And we talked a little bit, and we had made plans to go to lunch, and I think it took about a month before it happened. But then once I got to know him, I realized that he's a godsend. And I tell him all the time, I'll tell you, I appreciate him so much. You know, we have a lot of fun together. We enjoy each other. But the key thing is, he is helping me so much in my walk with God. Mm. And keeping me focused and keeping me grounded. And when I start flipping out over things sometimes, <laughs> he's the voice of reason. Just this week, I had to get um, a PET scan and MRI, and I'm claustrophobic. If anyone knows, you got to go into that tube, and it's like, for someone that's claustrophobic, it's the worst thing that could happen to them. 
and he talked to me and we prayed about it and everything and I went there this morning and I saw that machine I laid down it was a breeze to the point when the technician came and said you only have five more minutes I'm like are you kidding me I'm like he said well we can keep you in there another hour so I guess my point is that you know the things that I really learned is appreciate the now what's going on take you know you always hear this term take time to smell the roses take time to smell the roses you know think about things that are going on you know around you right now you know also think about your dash what is that dash you know are you living your dash the way you want to and then also always know that God provides because as Reggie says right now I am here by the grace of God I mean all my scans all my records all the statistics say that I shouldn't be here right now but you know what I'm here I feel I'm blessed I can't say that I don't have bad days some days but I have more good days that day so I would say in summary live your dash live each moment and just know that God provides mm -hmm.